This happened two days ago, around 1am. I was casually playing League with my friends and I decided that it was time to go to bed. Before that, I got down to the first floor to get my midnight snack. I opened the fridge, got what I wanted and took a glance at the big window which faced the woods. At first, I didn't notice anything but after about 10 seconds, I started noticing a tall, thin figure standing and looking around. My heart dropped and I just stood frozen. I stood there for at least half a minute while that thing was slowly moving and looking for something on the ground. Now, this might sound stupid, but I got up to my room and was so scared that I locked myself in, leaving my phone on the first floor. I thought that the thing I saw might have been me and might break in. Yeah, it's stupid now when I think of it. I stayed in my room for at least eight hours, no sleep, until I heard my phone ringing and decided to go down. When I got to the first floor, I checked that window and didn't see anything. I didn't tell anybody about this because I don't want to make a fool of myself. I want to hear your opinion. Have any of you had any similar experiences? Could you somehow explain who or what that might have been? I'm 20 years old and live in Lithuania, outside of my city. Woods are almost all around my area. Description of what I saw. It's hard to tell, but if I could guess, that thing was around 6... 10. Really lean. Bunch banged and looking for something on the ground. I really need to calm my mind because I was scared shitless and still am. All helpful comments will be appreciated. This was back in the mid 80s. My best friend in high school lived in a house that was interesting for sure. I have no idea if this had anything to do with it, but his dad had also died when he was three or four. It was just my friend, his mom, his sister, and their dog that lived there. Weird stuff was always happening in that house. His mom had kept the dad's tools after he died. They were in the garage. One time we came back from running around, no one was home, and all the drill bits were embedded in the concrete wall across from the tool bench. But one night beats them all. It must have been a weekend night, because I was staying over for the night. The kitchen was attached to the family room and on the opposite side from the kitchen was a long hallway that led to the bedrooms. There was a sofa against the wall that was by that hallway. I was sitting on the sofa. My friend's sister wasn't home. The only people in the house were his mother, my friend and me. We were all in the living room and as I said, I was sitting on the couch. I don't remember exactly, but I think we were t just talking about random BS. I looked over my shoulder down the hall. The light in my buddy's bedroom was on. That's weird. When we were down there earlier, I was the last one out. Could have sworn I turned it off. Oh well, no big deal. I go down the hall to turn it off. As I walk in the room, I feel a puff of hot air in my ear. I head back to the couch and sit down. We're talking and watching TV. A while later, I happen to glance down the hall and the light in the room is back on again. Now I'm kind of freaked. I refuse to go back down there and move to a chair across the room so I can't see down the hall anymore. My friend goes to his room to turn it off. Now the conversation had turned to all the weird things that have happened there over the years. That is when they tell me for the first time the story about my grandfather. Right about then, my friend looks down the hall again and gets a strange look on his face. I said, if that light is on again, I'm going to lose it. He just nods his head. I walk over and look for myself. Not only is it on, there's a shadow against the wall. Literally at the exact moment the TV goes grey. For anyone that didn't grow up in the era of OG TV sets, the screen went black or static fuzz if a channel went off the air before everyone had cable. This was grey, like the TV had been turned off. This really bizarre music starts coming out and there are all these weird voices. His mom says, enough, we're leaving. We all got in the car and went to this late night dinner type place where a couple of friends from school worked, just left the poor dog behind. We spent a couple of hours there just to get our nerves back. We finally went back to the house and now everything is completely dark. All the lights have been turned off. I don't remember why, but I didn't go home at this point. I still stayed the night. However, I refused to sleep in the bedroom. 
we made a couple of pallets in the living room. I slept in the one next to the wall. There were probably two feet between me and the wall. Of course, after the weirdness earlier, we didn't sleep with the TV on either. Sometime during the night, I woke up from hearing the dog walking around the kitchen, the attached room. Penny was a dog with multiple personalities, I swear. Some days she would let me pet her, other days she would act like she was going to eat your arm off. So I was always wary around her, though I love dogs. She bumped a couple of chairs in the kitchen walking around and then came through the family room. She walked between me and the wall and around behind the chair that was sort of behind my head. I rolled over and tapped my bestie to wake him up. I didn't want to get mauled during the night. I told him Penny was running around the house. He said he didn't think so. He called down to his mom at the end of the hallway. His mother replied. You could clearly tell she was from behind a closed bedroom door. The dog is in the room lying on the bed with her. It's the only time in my life I've been frozen with terror. I literally laid in the exact same spot with my eyes open until daylight. Sometime later, I went to the house to drop something off for my friend. I had a key and let myself in. I walked into the entryway. Penny comes around the corner. Hmm, I wonder, which personality am I going to get today? We're deadlocked in a stare-off. She doesn't move. She doesn't growl. Her head just drops a little and she keeps staring. All of a sudden, I feel that hot air in my ear. It all comes back to me instantly. Just exactly like it felt that night in the bedroom when I went to turn out the light. I honestly don't even remember moving. I was just outside running for my car. That was the last time I ever in that house by myself. Before I left to go to the military, a few other small weird things happened, but never to the degree of those events. His mom lived for a good many more years before she died. My friend moved out of state. I've often considered going back and asking the new owners if anything weird had ever happened. As he grew older and pondered events, I came to believe the reason the dog had bizarre mood swings was because of her invisible friend. She had to be with her all the time. It probably tormented her incessantly. I live in a condo for about two years. I don't know the history of the building, but it definitely wasn't new. It was a good deal and located in a nice part of Dallas. I've been living there for about a year when my grandmother passed away. During that year, nothing at all out of the ordinary had occurred. My grandmother had a nice collection of paintings. There was one I had liked since I was a kid in a really neat frame. My mom was the executor of the estate and let me have the painting. I was so excited. I hung it in the living room over the sofa so it would be the first thing to catch your eye as you entered the front door. I came home from work the next day. The painting was laying in the middle of the living room floor, which was about 10 feet from the wall, and the frame was broken. Luckily, the painting itself was not damaged. I had several pieces of other artwork hanging in the condominium. Nothing like that had ever happened before. This occurred on a Friday. The layout of the floor plan was basically a U-shape. The living room was the base of the U, with the kitchen on the right leg, and a short hallway to the bedrooms on the other leg. The bathroom was in the middle of the U-shape, with no outside windows. I hung the painting back on the wall by the canvas since the frame was busted. I'm a video gamer and often play at night in the dark. You can see directly into the kitchen from the living room. I was playing my PS4 late that night since it was Friday. Out of nowhere, the kitchen light popped on. I could easily see there was no one in the kitchen. I didn't think a great deal of it at the moment. Maybe the switch was partially flipped. I turned it off and headed back to the living room. I was entering the living room. I heard a noise from the bathroom. I had a pedestal sink and kept my hair gel behind the faucet handles. The toilet is several feet from the sink. My hair gel was floating in the damn toilet bowl. How did my hair gel magically fly three feet from the sink into the toilet water? At any rate, I dried it off and headed back to my game. As I was walking back down the hall, the bathroom door slammed shut. If you don't know, it gets stupidly hot in Texas during the summer, 
So your AC constantly comes on, even in the middle of the night. But never in the year of living there had the vent been strong enough to move a door, let alone slam one. I was unnerved. So I went downstairs to hang out with my buddy and ended up sleeping there after we had a couple drinks. I went back upstairs to my place the next day, not even knowing what to expect. Nothing else was out of place or in any way unusual. It was peaceful during my remaining time there. I cannot explain the events. I just sort of chalked it up to something in the building having a temper tantrum about my grandmother's painting, even though no further damage was done to the art. Before my band became a thing, my friends would go to this house and hang out with another friend. We would often stay the night as my friend Logan had a crush on the chick that lived there and we all went to high school together. The first night staying there, you could from the start feel that something was off, but I played it off as just a new place with new people. That is until the first event happened. I was sleeping upstairs in a sort of second den on a sofa while my friend and his crush slept in her room. Also sleeping in the second den was a friend Laura and Devon. Her in a recliner and him on a floor mat. I just started to doze off when the closets off from the steps turned on. Thinking to myself, okay, no big deal. Could be Chick's mom looking for something. A few moments go by and no noise at all. Then the radio turns on. By now I'm laying bricks in my pants, but hey, at least this ghost has good taste in music. After what seemed like five or ten minutes, the radio shuts off and I finally fall asleep. The next day, of course, I asked Chick's mom if she was looking for something upstairs, and she said no, and that the closet has no power and certainly no plug for a radio. That's when I learned about some history of the house from her, and that it was haunted. She claimed, and confirmed with a newspaper article from some time in the 1900s that she found in a basement, that there were five permanent spirits, and others that would come and go, either hang out for a few days, or only once. She strongly believed there was a portal in the basement. You know how crazy it actually is to take a shower and be scared that when you pull the curtain back, something might be on the other side. Terrifying. The five spirits, from what I can remember, are a young boy, roughly eight. He fell in the well on property and the community couldn't get him out, so they had to seal it. Trust me, I know it sounds out there. I didn't believe it either until she showed me the newspapers. I honestly would have called her out for trying to scare me if it wasn't for that and me actually experiencing the child. One year after my band departed, me and the chick kept hanging out. She was a year younger than me and a grade behind, so she left for school and I slept in. Chick has a little brother named Benji, we will say. Well, as I was sleeping, I felt the foot of the bed bow down and I say, Go downstairs, Benji. I'll be down to play in a minute. Upon saying this, I rethink, wait, he isn't allowed upstairs. And then I see this boy on the bed looking at me. Not in a scary or menacing way. Just watching me. Have you ever seen an old photograph that's aged? Looks brown or yellowish? That's what he looked like. He was wearing overalls with short hair and a blank expression. He then stood up walked to a dark corner of her room and vanished. She has blackout curtains to make the room darker and that was my only encounter with this child. The old lady who would like to play tricks. I never saw her, but her things would come up missing or moved. My shoes, keys, pop cans would get knocked over, door handles would jiggle. The last two I did experience while playing Xbox 360. The cowboy. Cliche I know, but this house was built sometime in the late 1800s. I think it was around Christmas. We were friends for years. I was watching something in the main room and TV and I smelled something off. That was not cooking. It smelled of a strong cigar. And then the stairs leading upstairs creaked and you could hear spurs clinging and clang from old boots and eventually hearing thuds of the man walking around. This happened on two occasions. I know I said five, but I didn't witness all five. In fact, I don't know what the fifth one is or was. I could be the same or separate from the last one I'm about to explain. 
This last one is what caused me to stop going to this house. And a few months later, my friends had a falling out and we all stopped hanging out for one reason or another. One moved, the other got jealous, the other got a job, you know, life and growing up. But this last one, I'll never forget. My band just got done opening a show for another local band and we were crashing at this chick's house for the night after a little partying. My guitarist Devin and I fell asleep in the main room. It was a full moon out and the house has bay windows. If it's on Google Maps, you'll see the windows, first floor, right side. So the moonlight was shining in. I just started to fall asleep in a recliner and my guard guitarist is behind me on the sofa. As I was dozing off, I felt something tap the back of my chair. It tapped two or three times. I thought it was my guitarist throwing stuff at me. I told him to stop and I was trying to sleep. Then I felt a harder tap. I looked back and he was passed out. The entire house was. Her mother's room was downstairs, two rooms over, off from the kitchen. Her mom, my guitarist and I were the only ones downstairs. My drummer, the chick and her two friends were upstairs. The house was oddly quiet. I then thought, okay, it must be the old woman. I got up and moved to the other smaller couch, thinking she just wanted to sit in the chair. As I moved to the couch and laid down, I couldn't sleep. I felt as if something was watching me and I was scared. I scanned the room for a bit and saw this shadow in the upper right corner, left from street view. The shadow was not a natural darkness. It was darker than dark and we stared at each other. Even as I type this years later, I still get goosebumps. It then quickly moved to the left, then right, then left, then to the center top of the window. I gasped. It then fell to the floor and went to the right corner of the wall slash window. It went left to right again. I started yelling for Devin to wake up, wake up, wake up. He's dead to the world. The shadow then begins to quickly crawl around toward me. Think about how the grudge crawls. It gets close, I kick it and then shout no. And I swear on everything, as quickly as the thing vanished, literally everyone in the house woke up. My guitarist shot up and looked at me. Her mom came out and asked what was going on. Your house is fucking haunted, yo. The people upstairs woke up and shouted down if everything was alright. I spent the rest of the night in the van. Later, after the event, I learned that this shadow or another shadow that hung out in a third room upstairs would target her younger brother, not Benji. She had two brothers, a young child Benji and an older brother, middle child Joey we will call him. This shadow, or maybe another, that's why I said five, would target Joey and he would wake up in the mornings naked and confused. He was old enough to start changing and thinking certain ways, but still too young to be sleeping in the nude. He would often sleepwalk, talk, and wake up confused and undressed. He moved into his grandmother's house and lived there most of the time, visiting occasionally. But this house was so haunted, it literally pushed him out and his room was off limits to everyone that would come to hang out. And even the people living there wouldn't go in unless needing to look for something as a last resort. There was a small office room upstairs across from the closet in the beginning of this. And that's where we would use the laptop to try and get EVPs. We would leave in the den room upstairs and leave for a few hours to come back and see what it picked up. And picked up things it did. Obviously, we could hear her mom doing stuff downstairs and if a loud noise would occur, we would quickly determine it was her. But there were also other things. Quiet footsteps, voices, and not like one or two from the same voice. Multiple voices. From multiple sources. Almost full conversations. Or parts of. We could hear things move around, tips over, turn on. It was the weirdest thing. I don't know if the chick or her mom still owns that laptop, or if the thing even still works. We tried videotaping things with her camcorder and webcam, but never caught anything. Smartphones didn't work either, just EVPs. But anyway, that's my experience over the course of a few years, hanging out at that house. Dillon Vale, Mount Pleasant, Smithfield, Adena. A hot spots with all the history going on, I once lived in Smithfield, and you could see shadows run across the streets in the night, and see stuff in the graveyard in town. I would walk around at night to grab smoke, but between Indian lands and all the other history, 
These small villages in Ohio are very active. Take this story for what you will. I wouldn't believe it either if I didn't experience this stuff myself. I can assure you, this is true. This happened, and it's my most wild experience. So me and my friend believe we've encountered something truly weird, and we've both been shaken up. For context, this happened today at 6 p.m., and it's pretty much dark at this point in England due to it being close to winter. I'll call my friend C in this for anonymous reasons. Me and C walked uphill with our torches on, so we could see more in front of us and keep an eye on our dogs. We reached this part we call the Mixed View, which is one of those historical points you find in a park with information and history engraved on stone. There were benches, and we finally sat down after being lost for an hour, and it seemed like nobody was there, so let our dogs have a sniff around and begin to relax for a moment. As we began to sit, we saw what appeared to be a really tall human form standing not too far from us, shining a light on us with a small red bit shining. We thought it might have been the park groundskeeper coming up to check we were okay. But all this thing did was stand there, not moving, with a light shining on us. C looked at me uncomfortably at this point, and I felt quite unsettled. So we decided to whisper because we were pretty much frozen. My dog didn't even approach it, and my dog usually approaches everyone and anything, and is very friendly. But his hackles were up, and his ears and tail pointed, and he would not take his eyes off of this thing. I tried to call him as he wasn't too far in front of me, and he wouldn't come to me. He stood there frozen too. C's dog also had the same stance, and refused to move his eyes away too. I know for a fact, if my dog is behaving like that, it's usually a bad sign. So I whispered to C to move away and go back to the entrance, which was a mile away. She agreed, so we slowly got up and walked backwards. This thing starts to move towards us after standing there for a good five minutes, and we both instinctively start fast walking. This tall figured thing with the light still shining starts to go into a jog. So me and C start running. We ran for half a mile, I don't think. I've even ran that fast since the bleep test in school. We finally look back to see if it caught up with us after going a different route, and luckily, we escaped what could have been bad. It's really bugging me, as I can't figure out what that thing was, because we shined a light on it, but all we could see was a tall, dark figure, and our torches are strong enough to make out who would be behind a smaller light. It was approximately six foot nine to seven feet. No facial features, seemed to have no outline of any clothes. It was very slender, and had shining, tiny red lights appearing every now and then on the body. Didn't speak, or wasn't vocal. The only action it did was stare at us for five minutes. Any of you got an idea of what this could be? So when I was about 18, I had some sort of paranormal encounter. I'll share my story and cannot wait to hear your verdict. My younger sister and I had acquired a nice apartment close to campus in a sleepy little town in East Texas. We had emigrated to the US for further studies and were excited to be on our own far from parental prying eyes. We were thrilled with our apartment. It was spacious and we had bought some cheap, cute furnishings. Pretty soon, we settled into the routine of college life. There were some oddities with the place that at first we didn't pay much attention to. The first was that despite the multiple large windows in each room, the sunlight never quite managed to filter into the apartment. The interior remained gloomy, so much so that we normally had to have lights on during the day. The second issue is that we started experiencing electrical wiring issues, lights flickering. Once, I even had a full-blown electrical fire start in the bathroom. That's for another day. My sister and I also started experiencing sleep paralysis. We had never had this issue before. It got so weird, we found ourselves piling up on the living room floor as we both scared of our rooms. One night, we both had the same weird experience. Started out as sleep paralysis. Then I saw a shadow man standing at my half-open door staring at me. 
I couldn't move. First thing on my mind was, who came into my room? I never sleep with any door open. I'm religious about firmly shutting cabinets, closets, any type of door or drawer before going to bed. While my brain was wrestling with that, I heard my sister scream and the paralysis was broken. The shadow figure disappeared. I ran to her room to find her babbling about a shadow man watching her from a doorway. We had experienced the same exact thing. She had also been in sleep paralysis at first when she became aware of him. A few days after that, I was in my room. I had an older radio alarm clock that was on my bedside table. It was rarely used as it malfunctioned quite a bit. This night, for some reason, I decided to sleep with my head on the opposite side of the bed, at the foot. There was a second story window on that side of the room, and I guess I liked the moonlight across my face. Later, deep in the night, I started hearing strange sounds. At first, I thought it was static from the alarm clock slash FM radio. It was a mix of underlying sounds, guttural growling, cat meowing, a baby crying all at the same time. Very creepy. It was coming from the window. First instinct was to pull back the drapes, but after taking a closer look, a chill ran right through me. That was an inhuman sound. It sounded like a cacophony of voices, some human, others not, some animal. I ran out and brought my sister into the room. As we listened in horror, the lamp that I used to sleep on in the room shattered. The room was now pitch dark. We ran out and shut the door. We had an after hours emergency number which we used. Thankfully, having no family in the US, the office manager was very motherly and had always insisted that we use it for any reason. The groundsman lived in the same complex. It was around 4 a.m. by the time he showed up. We were surprised as the agent that showed up was unfamiliar to us, but we assumed he might have been filling in for the regular guy. Half frightened to death, we explained the chain of events to him. He walked to my bedroom, turned on the bedroom lights, and looked out of the window. Of course, the noise was no longer ongoing. It was a calm morning. No wind, we were on the second floor. His explanation was that there was a cleaning lady downstairs and maybe we overheard her cleaning and got spooked. Yeah, right. After he walked off, barely hiding a grin, we slept the rest of the night camped out in the living room. The weirdest part was the next day. We went in to see the office manager. She was a friendly sort and the groundskeeper was her son-in-law. When we brought up the incident, it was the first time she was hearing of it. She called her son-in-law and he was even more surprised to hear of the events. Nobody had been cleaning the apartment downstairs. Who was the guy that showed up when we dialed the emergency contact number? We moved out ASAP. A few other creepy things happened and the entity followed me to my next solo place, but I've been rid of it for at least a decade. I am hypersensitive to energy though. What do you all think? A few years ago, I visited my friend who lives abroad. We decided to go inside an old amusement park that had been abandoned years ago. As a kid, my friend visited the place every week, so it was pure nostalgia for her. We snuck through a hole in the fence and entered the park. The place was taken back by nature, mostly overgrown and with small swampy puddles everywhere. We were nervous about snakes hiding in the grass and about the big pack of feral dogs roaming the property, but the paranormal hadn't crossed our minds. Upon entering the park, the dogs bark at us, warning us to leave them alone. So we avoid the area where they are and go explore. We seem to be the only people there. After a good 30 minutes of exploring, we stumble upon an empty karaoke bar. The place feels off somehow, not like the other buildings we encountered. My friend explains that the building is not what it seems. Karaoke bars in her country are often a cover for alcohol consumption, which was illegal back then, and prostitution. She doesn't recognize the place though, which is weird since she spent a big part of her childhood at the park. 
we figured that it must have been a bit hidden away from the crowds, since it was likely linked to illegal activity. The moment we entered the building, my attention was immediately drawn towards a creepy door with a broken glass panel. You could see that there was nothing on the other side, but somehow the darkness behind the door seemed more solid. I stared at it for at least a good 15 seconds before I told myself to stop freaking out about the door. While we explored the first floor, I heard footsteps right behind me. Thinking it was my friend, I turn around, ready to make a stupid joke about her creeping up on me, but she isn't there. I see her at the other end of the room, at least eight meters away from me. I chalk it up to the weird acoustics and don't tell her about it. Do you know that feeling when you get when people are staring at you? That's how the second floor felt. It was as if we walked into a crowded room, except there was nobody there. Like on the first floor, the darkness of some unlit areas seemed somehow too dark, more solid. I became increasingly nervous, but don't tell my friends since I don't want to sound crazy. Soon, my friend stopped in her tracks and said that she wasn't comfortable exploring any further. She later described that room as a black hole. She recalls feeling as if all her movements were slower than normal and her brain was foggy. This was right above the door that freaked me out so much. Back on the first floor, we feel silly for being nervous and try to overcome our fears. I decided to open a door adjacent to the freaky door, which was easier said than done. The door was stuck and I had to put my weight behind it to get it open. We saw a glimpse of a small storage room before the door was slammed shut again. We almost made a run for it, but since we stubbornly didn't want to give in to our fears and be pussies, we took a few more pictures of the room before we left. Once outside, we rationalized it by saying it must have been some sort of animal, a stray dog maybe, but we're not convinced. Opening the door took some strength, so what animal could have closed it with such force? There was barely any space between the open door and the wall, so I doubt that it could have been a person hiding there. We talk for a bit to lighten the mood, and we feel braver now that we're outside again. We decide to visit her favorite attraction next, the pirate ship. In the past, it would swing back and forth, but now we couldn't get it to move no matter how much we tried. We both pushed against it with our full body weight, but the ship wouldn't budge. We took a few photos while we chatted about my friend's memories of the park. All of a sudden, the pirate ship begins to move. Slow at first, so slow that I thought I imagined it, but then it starts to swing more clearly. Since we don't feel the creepy vibes that we felt at the karaoke bar, we decide to stay and watch. After a few minutes, my friend remarks that we should head back soon, since we wouldn't want to be in this place after dark. Immediately after these words left her mouth, it gets darker, as if it was suddenly twilight. Remember the dogs who barked when we entered the park? They had been quiet since they realized we were not a threat, but now they go wild, barking, howling in the distance. My friend and I don't hesitate and make a run for it. We run through the dark, overgrown park while the dogs go crazy. It was surreal. Once we reach the hole in the fence, we crawl out as fast as we can, and suddenly we feel safe again. I swear to God, once outside, the sh sun was shining bright again. We looked up to see if it was just a well-timed cloud that moved in front of the sun, but we couldn't see anything. To this day, my friend is convinced that something told us to leave, since it got dark right after we decided to go home, once it was getting dark. I don't believe in these kind of theories, but feeling wise, it genuinely felt as if we went through some sort of gateway when we entered the park, as if it was its own little world. The contrast was just that big. Back home, we talked about our experiences. Apparently, we both felt uneasy in the karaoke bar long before we actually voiced these feelings. I told her about the creepy vibe I got from the door and showed her a picture that I took of it when we first entered the building. She tells me she felt the same thing and took a picture just before we left. Upon comparison, 
We realize that the door is cracked open a little bit in my photo, but in hers, it's half open. These photos were taken five minutes apart, and it seems very unlikely that someone snuck in to open it while we were on the second floor. The dog park was in a different area of the park, and there was no wind that day. I don't have an explanation, but given our other experiences at the park, this creeped me out even more. Like I said, I've experienced strange things before, but nothing like this. In the hour that we spent at the park, I went from a skeptic to a believer. I would love to go back someday and see what happens. We moved into our house back in 2005. I was about 10 years old. The house was enough for our little family. So my dad decided to rent out one of our rooms to one of his family friends that also worked for him. My dad's friend, Abel, was a 34 year old man, didn't have a significant other and was saving up to make a house down in Mexico. Abel lived with us for a while. He was very nice to all of us, especially to my then four year old brother. Abel's room always smelled like him. He smelled of must and grease, partly due to his job. If you walked by his door, you could smell the odor pretty strongly. It was not a bad smell, just his smell. Anyhow, Abel lived with us for four years until he had gathered enough money to buy a really nice brand new truck and make his house down in Mexico. I took over Abel's room and over time, his odor left the room and was replaced with mine. In the summer of 2011, my grandparents were having their 50th anniversary. My mother and little brother left for Kansas, while my younger sister, father and I stayed back in our home in Colorado. We would later join my mom and little brother a few days later. On July 10th, I woke up, played video games and packed my clothes for our trip to Kansas in a few days. I remember that around 4 p.m. I opened the door to my room to play video games. And as I opened my door, I was bombarded with Abel's strong odor. This would be the start of my paranormal experience. I didn't understand why the room smelled like Abel. I lived in that room for about a year and a half. His odor was gone by then. Also, the windows were literally opened. Why did the room smell so strongly of him? I had no idea, so I asked my sister to smell my room as well, and she also agreed that it smelled very much like him. As the evening turned into night, I thought nothing of it. I went to bed and got ready for sleep. I turned off all the lights and started to drift away, only to be awoken by the scariest sound outside of my bedroom window. It was around midnight and a cat was literally screaming bloody murder and hissing directly at my bedroom window. It was yelling and hissing and making the strangest noises. This is something that has never happened. I quickly threw the blanket over my head and went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I got breakfast and my dad started to scold me. He asked me why I had turned on our stereo downstairs in the living room at one in the morning. I was confused. I told him I didn't do anything like that and he said I was lying. I asked him to explain what had happened exactly. My dad said that around one in the morning, he was going to bed and was awoken by loud music. He got out of the bedroom and into our living room to find the stereo full blast on a particular song in Spanish. The title of the song is called Adios, Adios, Adios by Los Acosta, a Mexican band that my dad's a huge fan of. If you don't know Spanish, the literal translation to the song title is literally goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. He and I were stunned. We didn't know what to think. I told him about my experience as well and all he could do is scratch his head. Later, we called my mom and little brother as we were going to head out to Kansas soon and my mom shared something very weird with us. She told us that my little brother dreamt that Abel had died. My dad would later confirm this. He was curious and went online to see if what my brother said was true. My dad had found an article online from his state in Mexico about a man that had died. The man in question was crushed to death by his truck. Police believed that he took a wrong turn and ended up being squished by the truck, eventually dying. As we looked at the truck, we realized it was the same truck Abel had bought. 
The truck didn't have a single scratch or dent, however. It looked like it was brand new. We were all in shock. Everything that had happened was not just a mere coincidence. Abel was going around saying his goodbyes. This has completely changed how I view life after death. It made me realise there is such a thing as life after death. How else can I explain all of these things? It had to be Abel. He came to visit us, to say goodbye. This will forever stay with me, and in a sense, there's a great comfort to know that life does not end when we die. I want to start off by saying that I have never been one to necessarily believe in the paranormal. My mind always tells me that there's a rational reason for everything. That being said, there are three things that I, decades later, cannot explain away regardless of how hard I try. The first is the story of my treadmill. When I was 13, my family collectively bought me one. It was a good gift considering that I was an introvert but wanted to get more cardio in. By this time, I lived in the attic, a long room with the ceiling sloping down towards the edges. The treadmill was set up and I enjoyed using it for a while. Once high school began, I had broken out of my shell and so it fell by the wayside. Cuts to 4am on a weekend and I get woken up by something that was as loud as a drill next to my ear. My parents were already awake and I, we, quickly saw that it was the treadmill running at its highest setting. My parents went downstairs and told me to turn it off. What I didn't tell them was, one, the key that needed to be inserted for it to run was not plugged into the bottom of the console, and two, it wasn't plugged into the wall. When I went to pull the cord from the socket, I saw that I had removed it from the outlet at some point. As soon as I grabbed onto the unplugged cord, it immediately shut off. I have no explanation to explain how that was possible. The second unexplained thing was my basement. In high school, it was converted into an entertainment centre for me and my friends. The basement was partitioned, so you had what looked like a lobby on one side, and on the other was the standard boiler, washer, dryer, etc. Almost every time I was downstairs, I got a weird feeling that something was watching me. The feeling would always get worse when I had to go upstairs. Once my foot was on the first step, I would always run as fast as I could to the top. It was though I sensed an invisible hand was about to grab the back of my shirt and drag me back down. When I got to the top, I felt safe, but couldn't bring myself to turn around, except for one time. So I was the usual listening to music and playing on my PlayStation when I needed to go upstairs for dinner. I turned everything off and hit the stairway running. Now the light for the basement was at the top of the right hand side. I pushed my hand against it to turn it off, but something told me I should look back to prove my paranoia was getting the best of me. Suffice to say, it was not. At the bottom of the stairs in the darkness, I saw two eyes that looked feline, staring back up. The colour in them was a yellowish red. Now we had cats and a dog, but we always made sure that there was no way they would not unintentionally go downstairs. Additionally, I'd say that it was some sort of animal that managed to get in, but there was no way they could. Our basement only had one window and it was glued shut. The other reason I could tell that it was not any animals we had or could even describe was because, judging by the height which the eyes were, it was tall enough to be at least four feet. I was petrified and got into a staring contest with what I saw. The eyes never blinked and so I took a back step slammed the door, stopped using the basement as an entertainment space, and moved everything upstairs to my room. Lastly, this is not an encounter, but strictly a feeling. I had grandparents who lived in the clear water area of Florida. We would drive down once a year to visit them for two weeks. I'm going to attempt to explain the layout without going overboard. You could enter the house in two ways, through the garage door which led into the living room, or up the path which would bring you into the sunroom. The sunroom wrapped around, going from the living room and swinging around in an L shape that led to the kitchen or turning left 
to my grandparents' bedroom. If you went in through the garage and took five paces, you could turn to your right where there would be a T intersection. To the left was one bedroom my parents stayed in. To the right was the room I stayed in and in the middle was the bathroom. What I can't explain is this. I was deathly afraid of the sunroom, especially at night. During the day, it gave off a feeling that the room did not want anyone in there. The night, however, was a completely different story. Once bedtime hit around 9 or 10 p.m., all of the lights were shut off. I kept mine on because I grew up with some sort of light on, still to this day. When I'd either feel the need to or woke up to go to the bathroom, the pit of my stomach dropped. I would open the door, close my eyes, and then turn right. Once I was in the bathroom, I would open them. When I was leaving, I would instinctively close my eyes again until I made it back to the bedroom. There were only a few times where I would sneak a peek down the hallway and could see the sunroom. I never saw anything, but my gut would tell me to close my eyes. This was never something I outgrew, and the last time I was there at the age of 21, I still couldn't bring myself to stare down the hallway from the bathroom. My grandmother moved out of the house when my grandfather passed away, so I no longer had to contend with that, but I can't explain what made that room feel so ominous and frightening. There are three strange encounters and feelings that my mind cannot use logic to explain. Maybe someone out there can make sense of what I witnessed. I stopped trying to long ago. It was exactly 22nd of October 2016. I was 19 years old. I was driving home after I passed the day at my friend's house to prepare for the Halloween party. But sadly, on the way home, I got in a car accident. A woman without watching made a U-turn on the street and I crashed into her at 80 kilometers an hour, about 50 miles an hour. After the crash, my car flew for around two meters, three feet, before stopping against the tree. That killed me, literally. I get reanimated by the woman with whom I crashed. She was a nurse, so she knew what she was doing and she saved my life. But the point is not that. The point is the moment where I was dead. I remember everything. I've seen my life again like I was watching it on TV. I had a good feeling like I was free. But there was always a strange dark shadow with me. Watching all the time with me my life until I reached the point where I was crashing and there I saw the complete crash, like I was sitting on the back seat of my car. And this shadow was still with me. I remembered stuff which I thought that I forgot. I've seen stuff which I didn't even think I was able to remember. I saw that the woman driving in the other car was speaking on the phone and the police checked her phone and found a call. Then the shadow said something to me, but I wasn't able to hear it until I got a pain in my chest and I came back to earth. I felt heavy, like I had four ton on me. The doctor said that I died in three minutes. I didn't get any big damage except that I cannot feel the same feelings or emotion as before. Brain damage or let's call it like this. But the feeling of being free was so unique. Anybody else have this kind of experience and want to share or have a discussion? about what we'll find in the afterlife. Once a year or two, for the last 10 years, my husband and I drive from Florida to Indiana to visit my family. Out of nowhere on a trip to Indiana, I had a dream that scared the flip out of me after I woke up. All I saw was the woman wearing a long blue dress with long sleeves. There may have been black lace or ribbons on it, maybe from the 1800s to early 1900s. She had long dark hair and maybe a half ponytail. It was dark outside, so I couldn't really see her face, but it wasn't very settled. Behind her was a sign that said Elizabeth Town and the sign and everything behind it was on fire. I woke up and it was probably between 3 to 5 a.m. to think. And I saw my husband still driving and I looked over and saw the same sign. We were entering Elizabethtown, Kentucky. 
I was so freaked out, but didn't tell my husband. The next two trips on our way there, early in the morning. I once again fell asleep and had the same dream and woke up those two times seeing the sign again. The last trip two years ago, I finally told my husband and couldn't find many answers on the internet. I told him to see if I happened to wake up before to make sure I'm not crazy, but I was so scared I stayed awake the whole trip. I even reached out to this Facebook group that posts about hauntings in Kentucky and the only thing they could find was something about a fire that happened many years ago in that town. Has anyone else had an experience like this? I haven't looked into it in a while. For the longest time, I just wondered why and if there was some message that I wasn't seeing. Although she was a Christian woman from the Deep South, the Deep South is also known for its superstitions and beliefs. My grandmother, who died 10 years ago, almost on this day, was very gifted and was able to communicate with the dead and was very sensitive. And there were a few weird things that happened after her passing. I wanted to tell you guys about one of them and see if any of you have experienced similar things. I always lived in a regular home on a regular block with my mom. I was always used to being alone because my mom had a very busy career, so I was never afraid of being by myself. She always had to travel and work late, so by the time I was 10, I was used to waking myself up, making my own breakfast, coming home, having a snack, and waiting till she got home around seven for dinner. So you get the picture. I was used to my daily life. I was used to my routine. This particular fall afternoon was no different. That night, I got a call from my mom. She told me that she wouldn't be home until tomorrow. She'd got stuck on location and she was going to finish late. So she wasn't going to bother driving all the way back from the event she was at. She would come back in the morning. I told her that I was fine and that, sh and that she shouldn't worry. Fast forward that evening, I was doing what I did best at 16. I locked myself in my room with a large Costco box of goldfish, a Subway soft drink and a Domino's cheese pizza and the travel channel. Subway and Domino's were around the corner, so that's why that was the usual combination of Friday night snacks. I was getting tired around 11 and decided to get ready for bed, get cozy and use my phone in bed. Around 11.45, I started to close my eyes and I thought I felt someone in the hall. You know, like when you have your eyes closed but you feel someone approaching. I had assumed it was mom coming in to do the same thing. She and grandmother had done almost every night of my life. Someone came into my room, gave me a kiss, pulled up my covers, caressed my head and laid next to me for a moment and whispered, I love you so much. I felt so safe and warm. The next morning when I woke up, I smelled breakfast in the kitchen and I heard faint music in the kitchen. Happy music. Nothing creepy like you'd expect a weird moment like this. Yes. I thought my mom was in the kitchen jamming. That meant I was going to have a good ass breakfast. Moments later, I get a text from my mom saying that she was driving home and would be back before noon and that I had better put all my laundry away since it's been laying in the laundry room for two days. I thought that text was weird, so I called her and asked where she went so early in the morning, considering she got home so late and I had just heard her in the kitchen. She told me that she hadn't been home and that she was on set for the photo shoot longer than expected. She's a photographer. So she slept in and decided to take her time coming home. She told me to stop imagining things and get a start to my day. Before she hung up, she warned me about the laundry and I rolled my eyes. I had laundry to do and I had already made plans with a friend and folding laundry was not fitting into that plan. As I headed out of my room for the first time that day, I was dreading going to the laundry room on the right of the hallway. But alas, I looked in the laundry room, my laundry was there, but it had been folded and it was just a little pin that I wore on my clothes on the top of the pile. A pin that my grandmother had given me that I kept in my pocket sometimes because I broke the pin. I must have had it in a pants pocket in the machine. I feel like my grandma was trying to communicate with me for a moment, doing something that was almost ritualistic. 
She would spend a lot of time at my childhood home with me when my mom was on business trips throughout the year. She would always come in my room and go through the some motions and say the same thing with her extreme Mississippi accent as she staggered out the room with her cane. So we didn't just move into this apartment, but we've only been here since August. Myself, my boyfriend, my dog and my sister all live here together. It's a decently sized two bedroom. When we first moved in, nothing felt off about it that anyone has mentioned. I always felt a little apprehensive being in our room by myself and in the bathroom when you turn the lights off because of the way the doors are. You have to stay in there in the dark to exit because you can't get to the light switch with the door open. Or that stereotypical, I'm washing my face and I think there's gonna be something there when I open my eyes, the feeling we all get, right? But I'm also a huge scary YouTube videos and horror movies fan, which is what I assumed it was. You know how you watch a scary video and then everything's a ghost all of a sudden? But I'm starting to think that maybe I'm just more sensitive than the other two to the paranormal and that there's something here. So the first thing that happened that was really strange was one night my dog was in my sister's room just hanging out with her on the bed. Now my sister had just recently gotten a snake but my dog didn't seem too concerned with it one way or another. Well, this night Azula started barking in Ash's room and we couldn't figure out what. At first we thought maybe it was because the snake moved. So we took her out of Ash's room and brought her to the living room so we didn't stress either of them out more, but Zoo kept barking. We realized she was barking at the door as if someone was outside, but nobody had knocked. So I held Zoo's collar and Ash went to the door and opened it. Nobody in sight. Mind you, it's like 1 a.m. at this time. We showed Zoo that nothing was out there, but she wouldn't calm down and kept barking for a few more minutes until she finally stopped. We didn't think too much of it though. Maybe she heard a car and got scared or something, right? Well, shortly after this, my boyfriend was home alone. I was at work and my sister was out shopping with our granny. Destin said that he heard the door open and assumed that Ash or I had come home early. He didn't go investigate and Zoo didn't react to it as far as I know. So then, 30 minutes later, Ash did come home and Destin came out of our room to greet her and ask her what she forgot in her car. He assumed the previous door opening was her coming home, but forgot something in her car, so she went to go get it and came back. Of course, she hadn't and told him so. So then he asked where I was, assuming the door opening was me coming home from work to grab something I'd forgotten before returning to work. This also wasn't the case though. I hadn't come back home since I left for work, so to clarify, the door opened by itself while he was home alone, and we don't know why. Then tonight happened, and now I'm really convinced that there is paranormal and not just coincidental. So I didn't get home until 10 p.m. Destin had the day off and was on the couch playing video games, and my sister got home at about 10.30 p.m. We were all in the living room, as Eula included, talking about our days, and then we heard the sound of something glass fall over come from the kitchen at around 11 p.m. Nobody was walking around in general, and nobody was in the kitchen. So we all got up and looked around and didn't see anything out of place. That is, until we opened the cabinet with the balls in it. The stack of balls that had been in the same spot and had never fallen over since we moved into this apartment fell over by themselves in a closed cabinet. Nothing was broken or anything, but I have no way to explain this. Not even circumstantially like the two above instances. I think our apartment is haunted. I don't know how old I was, maybe 11, 12. It was late one night. My room was above the garage in my house and I had two dormer windows since I was right on the roof. I put a piece of cardboard in the door, made a little sleeping nook in one of them, right under the window and had a phase in which that was where I slept, right under the window. 
I had an iPod Touch that I would watch episodes of Chowder on, and that's what I was laying there doing before going to sleep. It was pretty late at night, and I was beginning to doze off when I heard it. A frightening sound shot me awake. It sounded like a plane was right outside the window. The sound of a jet engine that shook my room. It pierced my ears and was the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. Because it was so real. I, at the time, immediately thought there were aliens just outside my window, looking in, trying to find me. And I was too scared to get up and look outside. I lived in a neighbourhood far away from any bustling activity. It was a clear summer night, and we didn't have more than three neighbours yet, because it was a new street. No one was driving past, and it wasn't a sound from nearby. It was just a loud engine humming outside my window. It lasted for a good amount of time. I was so scared for my life and didn't know what to do. But eventually, it stopped. It was gone. No noise. Straight back to dead silence. I got up and looked outside, but there was nothing there. No vehicles on the streets or in the driveway. My parents were asleep downstairs, on the opposite side of the house. So I decided to play games on my iPod to distract myself until I fell asleep. The next day, no one in my family talked about it. I figured no one else heard it, that I was insane and delusional. I didn't bring it up or ask if anyone else heard the loud noise the night before. Years passed. I never heard the noise again. I was now about 17 or 18 years old, and my brother's girlfriend brought up something about his one alien experience. To which he corrected her by saying that he never said it was aliens. It's just an eerie situation. I asked him to tell me what it was, and he told me practically exactly the same story I stated prior to this point, except from his perspective. His room was down the hall from mine, but shared a window corner with me to the driveway. He had an entire wall of mostly one window, and described the same noise I heard. He looked into the driveway while it was happening and saw nothing there. He's two years older than me. I was so excited to know I wasn't crazy and that it did happen. My mom doesn't recall the events, but she was either asleep or couldn't hear it from the other side of the house. Tonight, the noise came up in conversation between my brother and I again, and I decided to look it up. The closest thing I could find was a phenomenon called the hum. The hum seems to be described the same as what my brother and I heard, but for other people, it's a recurring noise nightly, whereas he and I only heard it once. I've also read how there could be too much pressure in plumbing lines causing them to shake, but those articles still prove it to be a recurring noise which we didn't have. So was it the hum? Was it a plumbing problem? Or was it some sort of ship hovering above or nearby my house? I'll never know, and that still scares me to this day. I work in a care home. Death isn't uncommon. But one thing that always pops up is the man in the top hat. Although us workers try to keep it quiet from the residents so they don't question it or be panic. Initially, because I work in a care home for those with dementia and Alzheimer's, I always put them saying they saw a man in a top hat to be something to do with their illness. However, it began to change after I had many ghostly encounters in the care home I only recently asked my shift leader about the paranormal activity at the care home as I knew she has worked there for years and done night shifts all her life. She told me about many ghosts and who they are and what they do. But what stood out the most is the man in the top hat. My mum and sister also work in the care home. I decided to ask my mum this morning about the man in the top hat. She told me how it's deemed as the death doctor and many people had seen it not only residents. Apparently, he's been seen at night lingering at the doorways of residents' rooms or windows. Shortly after, the resident who he visited would die. Whether it took an hour, day or week, death would be inevitable for them. One story that stood out, my manager told me, was once she took a passed away client to the toilet. She was fine, could dress herself, feed herself, etc., She was a perfectly normal old lady for the deteriorating dementia. She began to go crazy and scream 
about feeling a worm crawl inside her and seeing a thin silhouette of a man in a top hat and black coat in her bathroom with her. She then turned back to normal, finished on the toilet, stood up, and then instantly just dropped dead. If anyone has any stories about the man in the top hat and genuinely believes him in the way I do, please reach out 